we were in Plasho and we were, our uniforms were changed into striped suits and we were bona fide concentration camp inhabitants, prisoners. I was approached by one of the Jewish prisoners asking me whether I'm interested in doing something which would be dangerous but might save our lives. I said, describe it to me, maybe I'm interested. And he described it to me. We are forming an underground group because we believe that the time will come and we hear from other sources that such time has come other places already, that they will kill us. Therefore, we must protect ourselves. We are to uh, uh, try to get weapons. We are trying to be in contact with outside undergrounds and uh, see whether we can save ourselves that way. And I said, yes, I'm interested. I was assigned another partner and the two of us were one cell of the group. We knew nobody else. We just knew each other and we knew where to find instructions. Instructions were always in writing and they were to be placed in that place and every so often we were to go there and rec uh, recover them, read them and follow them. Everybody that was unloaded from the train was killed. And that's my father knew we were the first people in Warsaw ghetto to know, one of the first people to know what they're Jew doing with the Jewish people. And therefore my father had a, developed a, a policy and he said to us, <laughs> little as we were, but I understood and that saved my life many times. He said, remember one thing, whatever the Germans tell you to do, you do the opposite. Because if you do what they tell you to do, you're going to die. Somebody came and said, you know that the Jewish young people have started an uprising. They are fighting the Germans. And uh, it was really hard to believe, you know, but they did. They, they fought them for, for five or six weeks, you know, and um, I, I can't even tell you how heroic that was because such countries like uh, France and, and, and uh, what do I know, Belgium, or even Poland, they all felt it was in, you know, days, weeks, where they had such armies, and here these few young Jewish kids, they had Molotov cocktails and things like that. Anyway, we got into this bank, it was in the cellar, and it was a lot of people there. And um, I remembered a few things about this bank, there was no water to drink, the water was uh, real rust, was yellow, and um, there was a little baby there, a newborn baby, and uh, the baby was crying all the time. <laughs> and the people um, kept saying, you have to kill the baby, you have to kill the baby, because if you won't kill the baby, they will find us. And believe it or not, they killed the baby. They killed the baby because it was a uh, hundred lives that had a, perhaps a chance of survival against one life that had absolutely no chance of survival. I don't know how they did it, but they killed this baby. And then it was very, very quiet. And we were sitting there and it was a terrible, terrible time because we were all so scared. We were already halfway dehumanized, I think. Uh, oh, I, I'm sure we were. And all of a sudden, the manhole opened up, and we saw uh, guns pointed our way. And we thought, well, that's it. You know, the Germans have come to get us. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was the Warsaw Ghetto fighters. The young people came in. I will never forget that as long as I live. They were very young. They were 16, 17, 18. They had those caps, you know, and they had guns. And they were telling us what's happening, how they are fighting the Germans, how they have killed a lot of Germans, and the Germans are coming with tanks. Uh, they're fighting them like a real army, you know. To this very day, I feel that uh, it's like I, I have witnessed a, a part of Jewish history, a very important, a vital part of Jewish history, because I think that it has given um, dignity, courage. You see, um, 
they always say that we went like lambs to slaughter, but we did not, because uh, this was something that uh, it was against all odds. Do you understand? I was always uh, interesting uh, to look, uh, you know, for for situation where I could be of any help. And uh, and one time I watched a whole train load being loaded, was shoved in and tromped in, not used. Not just gently uh, being gathered, kicking them in, sh stomping them in, uh, slamming the door shut on these cars when these people were rounded up. Families were separated, uh, screaming for help, uh, defenseless, uh, being uh, abused. Uh, and load it up and go to Westerbork. I've seen that often. And it was so, so terrible to watch that. And still it was like a magnet that I wanted to see that. And it always stayed with me. Uh, they say they were herded like cattle. Worse. Much worse. And I tried to hide, uh, a, a, a young boy, he, he used to, you know, they were used panicky and they used flew every direction. And I put, him, I put him on my bike and I bicycled away. Maybe eight year old boy. But it was very dangerous. I could have been shot in the back. But I did it. And, and the boy flew, he, he escaped. <laughs> 